In this module, we will study fluid flow and the application of numerical methods to fluid flow phenomenon. In unsteady flows, the flow variables will vary with, with time. The flow domain boundary may also vary with time. Even the boundary conditions of the flow domain may change with time. Unsteady flows or transient flows are typically more complex than steady state flows. CFD analyses of unsteady flow usually require more computing resources. These extra resources are needed for meshing or discretization that is required to capture the transient effects of the flow. Also, unsteady flows may require several time steps to fully describe the physics of the transient flow. In order to capture these transient physics, a reasonable time step size must be used. If the time step is too large, you may skip over important phenomena. If the time step is too small, the CFD simulation may take too long. The size of the time step also determines the numerical stability of the analysis. If the time step is too large, the CFD transient solution may diverge or introduce non-physical variations of dependent variables. So there is a balance of numerical stability and accuracy with computer resources available. For unsteady flow, the additional term carrying the time derivative takes prominence and cannot be ignored. In order to solve an unsteady flow problem, time steps are chosen depending upon the strength of the time derivative. For instance, when analyzing shockwave phenomenon, time steps taken are very small on the order of milliseconds, while atmospheric computations can use time steps in the order of minutes, hours, or even days. To determine the right time step to start the flow analysis, current numbers often is used. For explicit transient analyses, the CFL condition is a necessary condition, but not sufficient for the convergence of the numerical approximation of a given unsteady flow problem. However, Autodesk CFD uses an implicit transient, so the CFL condition is not strictly necessary for convergence. Still, this condition is a good starting point to estimating a time step size. So it's best to use a small time step in Autodesk CFD to accurately represent the transitory nature of the flow. Autodesk CFD will calculate an estimated time step size for certain CFD analyses, for example, motion and rotating region flows. For other transient CFD analyses, start with a time step size that is approximately 100 times smaller than the smallest specified velocity boundary condition. This will be the maximum time step that Autodesk CFD will consider. If this time step is too big, the Intelligent Solution Control and Autodesk CFD will automatically adjust this time step down to maintain numerical stability. However, the Intelligent Solution Control may also prematurely stop the solution. If this is the case, you can see what time step that the Intelligent Solution Control set and they use that time step. Then turn off Intelligent Solution Control to finish the transient. One classic example of unsteady flow is the vortex shedding in the wake of a cylinder. Even though the boundary conditions set for flow over a cylinder are all constant in time, the flow in the wake will oscillate and shed eddies alternately from the top and bottom of the cylinder. This phenomenon is seen as in actual practice. The universal car top carrier crossbar shown in the figure will whistle at different frequencies depending on the speed of the car. The reason for the whistle is the oscillating vortices behind the circular shaped bar. For your information, at 65 miles per hour, that whistle is quite annoying. By now, we are familiar with the process of performing a CFD analysis with Autodesk CFD. We start by creating a new design study. The CAD file for this example was created in Autodesk Fusion 360 and saved as a .sat file. We will edit the geometry, again looking for urges, edges to merge or small objects to remove. In this case, there are no small objects or edges to remove, but we do want to change the units of the design study to meters. We will use SI units for this test case. Flow across a cylinder is an external flow example. The free stream boundary is far from the cylinder surface. Here the flow slips with the free stream air flowing past, so we assign a slip symmetry boundary condition on this boundary. The outlet is marked by a pressure of zero. At the inlet, 
we assign a velocity that will make the Reynolds number based on cylinder diameter equal to 2000. This is in the range of Reynolds numbers that should shed vortices. We're going to do something different for the mesh in this example. Since we are only interested in the fluid part, we will suppress or not mesh the solid cylinder. This will save us some compute resources since the elements in the cylinder do not participate in the fluid solution. For most fluid-only problems, you can suppress all of the solid parts. The exception is if you are going to study heat transfer or if you're going to do a subsequent stress analysis or dynamic analysis on the solid parts. Also in this example, we are going to use a uniform mesh. Ordinarily, Autodesk CFD assigns the element sizes to the bounding edges and grows the mesh from there into the fluid domain. This growth increases the size of the elements. This is due to the fact that most of the large gradients are near the edges of the model. In our case, the biggest gradients will be in the wake behind the cylinder. To get smaller elements in the wakes, we need to use a uniform mesh so that the edge sizes will be maintained in this fluid space. Take care when you use the uniform option because it can create a very large number of elements. For this example, the Reynolds number is 2000, so the flow is laminar. So on the physics window, select turbulence and click laminar. We are going to start the analysis using the steady state solution. This is because it sometimes takes a large number of time steps to get the flow started. Starting with the steady state solution allows us to get the cylinder wake established. For steady state solutions, make sure that intelligent solution control is enabled. As the solution progresses, you can see from the convergence window that the solution is not steady. You can also see the wake already starting to oscillate. Now we are ready to turn on the transient. We will start by disabling the intelligent solution control. If we didn't have a good idea of time step size, we would leave the intelligent solution control enabled. The reason we turn it off for transient flow of solutions is that the intelligent solution control may automatically stop the solution before we have captured all of the effects that we are looking for. In our case, we have a good idea of the time step size, which is 0.1 seconds. We also set the inner iterations to 1. We do this for two reasons. The first is that we are looking at the true transient nature of the flow. If we were studying a transient flow that was processing to a steady solution, we would use more inner iterations. Since we are studying the flow that stays transitory, we can save time by computing the inner iteration to 1. Finally, we may be interested in looking at animation of the transient results. To see an animation of the results, we have to save the result sets for each frame that we want to animate. You may also want to see how the summary parameters like wall forces or inlet or outlet bulk values change over time. Then we would also save the summary files for each snapshot that we want to view later. Now that we have saved results, we can animate those results to observe the transient flow effects. All of the results files that we have saved are available for animating. Be careful, because each time you stop the analysis, a result is saved. If you are trying to animate equal time intervals, you may have to eliminate some of the result sets. You can do this by clicking on them. Another type of unsteady CFD flow analysis that is frequently performed is when the flow or velocities are steady, but the thermal or heat transfer is transient. We use this type of unsteady CFD problem setup for the chilled water storage tank, which is part of a large chiller plant. The chiller plant provides air conditioning for a hospital complex. The storage tank is used to reduce chiller cost. The tank is pumped full of cold water at 40 degrees Fahrenheit during the night hours. This is the charging cycle. 
Then the tank is discharged or used to provide the chilled water during the daytime hours. Since we can only measure temperatures on the outside edge of the tank, how can we tell if the water in the tank is fully chilled? We can use CFD to study the tank temperatures over time and look inside the tank. The flow results are shown in the right two panels. The upper panel shows the streamlines of the flow. The streamlines show the large eddy formed at the end of a distributor plate on the bottom of the tank. The lower right panel shows the velocity vectors in a detail of the area where this large eddy is located. The vectors show that there are two counter-rotating vortices here. The left panel shows the animation of the temperatures in the tank. The temperature animation shows that the colder water fills the tank from the outside wall first, and the central core of the tank takes longer to cool. Since the outside wall is where the temperatures in the actual tank can be measured, the animation shows that these outside wall temperatures may show a cooler temperature long before the central core of water is cooled. This concludes our video on unsteady CFD fluid flow analyses.